Hey guys, CC Chapman. I'm super excited because today you get to hear the story of Jason, the man who invented these puppies. This is a Goruck GR1. It is my backpack of choice. It's what I use to travel around the world, and I'm a big fan of their products. I took a special trip to New York so I could sit down, have some Shake Shack, and then sit down and interview Jason. He is the founder and the man behind the brand that is Goruck. Let's find out about his journey. So I'm Jason McCarthy, I'm the founder of GORUCK and the GORUCK Challenge. So GORUCK, we make military inspired gear. So it's, it's patterned after the gear that I had in Special Forces and we sort of removed anything that was excessive, pared it down to the bare essentials, made it as durable and uh, military grade as we could and we do it in the States and we offer a lifetime guarantee. The goal with GORUCK was to, to create something that was timeless, a classic. And there's no way to do that that doesn't involve extreme amounts of quality. And we want something that's going to last forever and that people are gonna be proud to wear. And we also think that less is more, so fewer things in your life is better than just disposable everything. So sure, you can go buy a bag for, for a fraction of the price, and every year you can buy a new bag for a fraction of the price but it's, it's not the same. And you're just disposing more things, it doesn't work as well. You don't, you don't care about that thing. And we wanna make things that you care about. So I started GORUCK when I was still in the, the, the United States Army Special Forces. And the idea was to take all of the stuff that I had, right? Because the military has the best stuff and Special Forces has the even better stuff. And so I had so much stuff over the years and just to take all of that and pare it down and just create the the best of it but things that could thrive in any environment so not just Baghdad but also New York City and to do that it just I leveraged a lot of my buddies to field test everything and I sort of drew upon the the knowledge that I'd had at the end of the day as just a an end user uh, and, and an expert at, at breaking things and that's where go ruck the bag side came from so I was in West Africa, in, in Ivory Coast. I was, uh, I was married at the time, and I was looking for something to do as I transitioned out of the military and into the, into the private sector. I was on leave, Christmas leave in, in 2007. And uh, you know I was trying to do some consulting there for a period of time on security-related services, and there was the concept of a, a go rock, right? So a go rock sort of takes inspiration from the, the rucksacks that we would fill in Special Forces when we would go on missions. And you, you pack them full of everything that you need. Bombs, explosives, extra batteries, extra radios, everything. And you put them in the trunk of the Humvee just in case. Just in case what? Just in case your your mission goes to hell and your, your vehicle is disabled and you have to fight. You have to have everything that you need at that point in time. And so I, I thought to do that and to bring that to the private sector in war-torn Ivory Coast, West Africa, once I finally got out. And uh, my wife, Emily, she said, you know, we were talking about what I should do, and she said, you should do the GORUCK thing. And, you know, I sort of started talking to a couple other people about it. The name really resonated, it sort of stuck. People got it, they understood it, and it just sort of developed from there as being a project, really. So that, that's the genesis of it. Uh, Abidjan, Cote d'Ivoire. I wanted to be a doctor. So my, uh, my grandfather had countless heart attacks. And as I got older, I said I wanted to be a, a heart doctor who could help him when he got his heart attacks. <laughs> I didn't understand that you had to be really good at science and those kinds of things. So um, it wasn't meant to be. I mean, the early struggles were everything. I mean, the problem was, was that GORUCK was always meant to be a brand. It was never meant to be just a backpack company. And by brand, I mean it's, it's meant to be one of the most respected brands in the world. And that's always our, our mindset from day zero, was it's, it's either this or it doesn't exist. And the hardest part was that I don't know how to sew anything other than maybe a uniform if I really have to, right? And so, 
coming and creating Gora with the notion to create a brand when you're gonna make a, a bag, it's, it's difficult. So it took us forever to find people who could make it. It took us forever to sort of design a logo and, and all these things. But, you know, friends of friends and a little persistence will get you everywhere. Do it, man. But it's, it's not easy. It's not something that just happens. I mean, this didn't just happen. I started Go Rock in 2008 and for two years, worked every day, almost all day, before ever earning one dollar. And you better figure out a way to do that. Something like that. that there's no shortcuts, there's no way around it. But if you're passionate and persistent, you can do whatever you want to do in this life. I mean, it's... Being in Special Forces shaped my life for, forever. I mean, the, the classic mission of Special Forces, for instance, is to move in to a foreign territory and link up with indigenous forces, train them, and then conduct massive, massive scale war type operations, right? So think Northern Alliance in Afghanistan, that kind of thing. So how to get other people to do things for you is challenging in these types of places. It teaches you how to solve problems. It teaches you to, to rely on yourself and people that you trust. But Goruk's origins as a company are my grandfather's, right? Both of them. So, you know, they were kind of the, the classic 50s era people who just, you know, your, your word and your handshake was your bond until the end of your life. And just to do right by people, because there's no shortcuts on that front either, especially now when people will tell people in, in two seconds. And so people make mistakes. It's, it's how you live up to those mistakes. We make mistakes. Not every bag we make is perfect, but we live up to our mistakes and we do right by, by people when we, when we do that. And that's just 101 from my grandfathers. I don't know. I, I mean, I, I've, I've never thought of it really. I mean, I was, I was in business school at Georgetown's business school and I met a lot of I met a lot of people that are now instrumental in GORUG. The other thing that it allowed me to do was a sort of transition problem solving from war to business. And, and that's not something that just necessarily happens. I mean, solving problems downrange are, are, are different, right? There's a rank structure. You still have to win hearts and minds, whether it's the guy serving next to you or it's the person that you're trying to get to work for you who's a local force in Iraqi or, or an Afghan. But, you know, it's different. People are still the greatest challenge in all of this. And that sort of eased the transition for me from war to business. They're kind of the same. <laughs> I mean, I have, you know, people that I love in this world and they just come with me to things that I need to do at the same time. And I don't, you know, again, since I started GORUCK, there's no vacations. It just, this is what I do, I love it. I love going, I mean, we have lunch at Shake Shack. I mean, I bring my camera because if the light's right or this or that, I'll do a post on Shake Shack, you know? Or just randomly do other stuff as, as I see it. I'm, I'm sort of working and thinking about work all the time. And, you know, the people that love me, love me for being me. And, and that's me, especially right now, because we're still a really young company. And there's no complacency whatsoever, because the first time that that happens, you know, you're, you're done. You're done. Someone else that's better will, will come along. So that's my balance. <laughs> Java is the love of my life, right? I go everywhere. Java's my dog, my chocolate lab. And we go everywhere together. I've been to 48 states with Java. Uh, I mean, I just take him everywhere. If I can't go somewhere, it's with Java, it's almost certain that I'm not gonna go there. So, you know, that's just, uh, <laughs> as he sees another dog <laughs> guarding me, right? Um, you know, he's just great. He's, he's my other balance, I suppose. So, to go back to the balance question, every day, I do something with Java. I go for a run, I take him for, a, uh, take him to go play in Rock Creek or wherever we are. It just kind of clears my head, and I don't, I don't even think about work then. Usually, you know, sometimes, but, but uh, you know, when he's around, it's just life's better.
I don't have a good answer because I don't have an answer. I don't think that I would trade places. I'm racking my brain. I mean, I, I love what I do right now. I feel like I was born at a, an amazing time in our country. I mean, I graduated from college three months before 9-11. And so I've spent my entire professional career in the post 9-11 world. And, you know, I feel like I want to do right by, by my time and my place. So, I mean, the frontiersmen in the early days of America certainly come to mind. But, I mean, I, I don't know. I feel like everyone has their own calling and they should do that. So the Go Ruck Challenge, much as the bags are patterned after you know, the, the, the rucksacks I had in Special Forces, the Go Ruck Challenge is patterned after the training I had in Special Forces. Except it's not for the military, it's for civilians. And again, to go back to your points about what should you do if you have an idea and a dream and a passion, it's not just gonna happen, right? So we were dealing with a website in the early days of GORUCK. We had a website where we had a one inch by one inch little black thing on our site and nobody was buying it. And I was like, I've got to figure something else out, right? We've got to figure out a way to sell this thing because I, I believe in our, in our gear. I wholeheartedly believe in it. And it's just about getting the message out there. The challenge was started as a way to market our bags, to say that they were fit for war and the next closest thing to war as far as conditions is the Go Ruck Challenge. And so people show up and now they sign up and, and they bring bricks, they shove bricks in a, into a Go Ruck bag and we go around the city and it's, it's a team-based event that's patterned after Special Forces. So it's every bit as hard, and I mean this, it's every bit as hard as the training that I had in Special Forces. You cannot believe how hard it is. And yet our pass rate is about 98%. So what it is, is it's a positive event. We show people what's possible. We never sit around with a bullhorn and tell them what they cannot do. We show them together that if they work together, that they can accomplish anything. And so at the end of it, you know, they've seen a city, they've gone 20 miles, sometimes more. It's been 12, 13 hours. It usually starts at 1 a.m. in the middle of the night on a random sidewalk or a random park or just anywhere in, in a big city. And uh, you know, you're know you led by Special Forces cadre or something like that. So originally it was it was me. There's a lot, there's a much larger cast of characters now, each bringing their own unique personality to it. But, but that's it. And people have really responded well to it. On a larger scale, Go Ruck is meant to be a brand, but also a voice for good, a champion for causes that we love. And those three main causes are US manufacturing, the US military, and sort of a sense of local pride, right? So that's why you'll see you know, the, the local corner restaurant, right? In New York, I think the last place was Corner Bistro, but it might as well have been Shake Shack, right? These local type, establishments, a lot of times dive bars, because they've got the most character. And then, you know, the US military is also just near and dear to my heart, because I think that we're 10 years into two wars and those stories need to be told. And, you know, I can get a little bit more access than, than some other people can, just because of my background. And then US manufacturing. It's also a little bit easier to, to make introductions to places, because I can say, you know, Go Ruck, we're US manufacturing we're US manufacturers, we're championing this cause of US manufacturing. And, and so that was another sort of part of the initial push, which was US manufacturing is sort of all on the same team. No matter what, another backpack company or whatever, like no matter what, it's good. Let's promote US manufacturing and if I can play a part in that, then I wanna do that. So that's sort of how I justify it is because it's me, right? It's me and that's where the passion is. My passion is just for those causes. It's for the vision of Go Ruck. It's for the brand Go Ruck to be one of the most well-respected brands in the world. And you can't get there if all you do is focus on yourself all day. It doesn't work. You gotta just do it, man. I mean, I, I, to break it way down, I started Go Ruck with a napkin sketch and a vision. And if I can do that with Go Ruck, then you can do that with your passion. That's what I said.